Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Grandmaster Shimon, and welcome back to Flower Paradise. And today we have another episode of Sakura Fox Adventure. In the last episode, we had an intense fight scene where Makoto finally got her powers. She grew her nine tails and used her powers to extinguish Ohana. So if you guys did miss that episode, I highly recommend going back and watching that. Um, I do have to hit that save button real fast because I didn't do that between episodes. And we're just going to jump into it. So make sure you guys hit that like button if you have not already. And uh, we got to figure out whether or not we forgive Ohana. Now, this is interesting because I kind of want to see both. Um, but I think we're going to forgive Ohana solely because, uh, I mean, we're playing the nice girl. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to see what happens if we don't forgive her, but we're going to forgive it. I look at Ohana, my eyes narrowed. I want to hate her. My life would be so much, much easier if I could turn my back on this wicked, manipulative woman who took part in my memories for her own personal gain. But by all rights, I should detest her, but I can't. For all her flaws, Ohana was my tutor for the better part of my life, and she was my only friend in a sea of cold, callous whispers, and I loved her. I cared for her. I can't think of the way I, uh, of her the way I did before, but I can't hate her either. Maybe that's why after a long pause... All right, I finally choke out these words. I will forgive you. Oh, Makoto. Ohana's eyes light up. She looks so relieved, a surge of pity courses through me. Does she truly care about my opinion that much? Then in that case, she must really love me. Perhaps this is the right decision after all. I'm glad I was able to forgive her, but my forgiveness comes at a cost, you know. I don't hate you, but I can't forget all the ill you did towards me and Junie caused a lot of problems and our relationship can't go back to the way it was before too many things have changed oh yes you're right i understand i did a terrible thing and i know i can't take back my actions but i'm still so happy ohana sniffles tears bead in the corner of her eyes moisture slowly drips down her cheeks shimmering in the cold moonlight i don't i don't care what caveats you attach to your forgiveness I, you could spit on me or tell me to eat dirt. I don't mind. It doesn't matter. I'll do whatever you want, Makoto. If only I can remain in your life. Very well, then here are my conditions. I want you to remain with Junie in Warren Village. I know now, after all that's happened, that I love her, and I want to stay with her. What? But Makoto, if you stay with the humans, they will accept me. I stare Ohana down, my eyes narrow, fingers clenched into fists. I will make them accept me. I want to show them that I mean no harm. I think after I defeated you, it should be obvious that I have their best interests at heart. You say that now, but humans are fickle creatures. Even if they accept you one day, they may change their minds the next. You're not safe here, Makoto. So you think I'd be safer in your clutches knowing you can erase my memory on a whim? I raise an eyebrow, unimpressed at Ohana winces. All right, that is a good point. I'll admit I've done little to earn your trust. It's only natural that you'd be uncomfortable with me. Then, in that case, though it pains me to do so, I suppose I'll let you reside in this village. You can stay with that human girl only. Ohana stares at me, her hands clasped in front of her silent prayer. Please, don't cut me out of your life altogether. I if I can can't see you again, there'd be no reason for me to live. I'd go mad. She says that like she isn't insane already. Junie winds an arm around me, her lips pressed in a small pout. How, how can you say, how can you forgive her that easily, Makoto? I don't think she's learned anything. And how are you to know that, you human bitch? You've only known my Makoto for a few days, whereas I've known her my whole life. I'm far, far more qualified to be her partner than you. I wouldn't be too certain about that. I've never tried to erase Makoto's memories. You're the one who's unqualified to be with Makoto. Why, you, er, 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 the little spark thing that you see in anime happening just right in their freaking eyes. Two women glare at each other. Junie's arm is still wrapped around mine, her bosom pushed up against my arm. I can feel Junie's warmth against my skin. It soothes my aching, weary body, but it does little to, uh, to ease my steady mountain headache. Forgiven Ohana is going to be even a taller order than I thought, what with Junie's jealousy, but I'm prepared to give this a shot. I've been, I've always been stubborn, but I'm going to do my best to make this work. Please don't argue, you two. I haven't finished yet. Like I said, I want to live in Warren Village with Junie. 
there's nothing for me in Yamatai, and I never fit in there. My mother has probably lost all hope in me. I know she's trying. She was training Shizuka to be chief in her stead behind my back. I doubt my departure will change all that much. I have no desire to go back to that prison, but I. D but it doesn't mean that I want to cut you out of my life, Ohana. We can still see one another, but I don't want you to be my tutor. I'm not a child any longer, and I don't need your guidance. I don't want you to be my superior. Instead, I prefer we be equals. Then maybe we'll be able to repair our relationship, and we could be happy together, the three of us. Huh? Are, are you including me in that equation, Makoto? That's right. You're the most important person to me, Junior. You're my lover, but Ohana is my old tutor. I want all three of us to be friends. I know she has a dim view on humanity, but I hope by spending time together she can realize that there are good humans in this world. I want all of us to get along. That's always been my dream. Junie and Ohana looked at each other for a few minutes, speechless. The wind blows through a de uh, desecrated festival. Uh, desecrated festival. A few vi vi villagers stir, wincing as they get to their feet. Life is slowly returning to the festival grounds. Despite Ohana's fury, nobody died. We were able to achieve a happy ending despite all odds, and maybe that's why Junie relents. All right, fine. She pounds, evidently displeased. I don't like that woman, Makoto. I can't pretend to like her either. Ah, trust me, the feeling is mutual. If it's for your sake, though, I'll try to get along with her. I like play, talking to people from different cultures, and who knows, maybe in time, we'll be able to put our differences behind us. I'm not so sure about that myself. I have no real desire to spend any time with a human being, but I can hardly ignore Makoto's wishes now. I've controlled her for far too long. It's time that I make her, uh, let her make her own decisions. My love was selfish and destructive. In my madness, I wanted to keep Makoto to myself, and I never let her go, but I was a fool. I hurt her a lot, and if this is my only way to make amends, then so be it. I'll do my best to become a better person, and I'll try to learn to do my share. I might be hundreds of years old, but perhaps it isn't too late for me to change after all. You guys. I glance between my lover and my ex-tutor, and a relief smile on my lips. My face flushed, and I feel my eyes sting. This worked out better than I ever hoped. I don't have to leave Ohana or Junie. With the best of luck, the three of us can stay together. Junie and Ohana can learn to accept one another, and with both of their love, I can put the past behind me. I want to move on, stronger and more self-assured than ever before. In the wake of all the chaos, the village chief had no choice but to thank me. He watched my fight with Ohana while and stared in her vines, and it seems he's had a change of heart. I thought you were a monster. I was certain you meant to destroy our village and cause us harm, but now I see my prejudices are, were unfounded. You fought against the Nim for our sakes, and you have saved us all. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I just hope you can forgive us. That's how the apology goes, more or less. Of course, I'm more than willing to accept. Now that I can stay in a warm village with Junie, the two of us can be happy together, but our relationship isn't exclusive to the two of us anymore. That's why, a week after the attack on Warm Village, I found myself in a rather awkward situation. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think, I think I'm probably going to have to censor that. I mean, there's, there's like white spots, so you don't actually see nips, but YouTube might get mad at me. I mean, they're probably already mad at me, and I don't get monetized because I'm a tiny channel, so I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I take the time in, maybe I don't, you'll see. Well, I mean, you're seeing right now. Uh, I mean, it's a cute picture. Not gonna lie, a little bit jealous. She's not only a fox girl, which is amazing, and I would, dude, what I would not give to have actual ears that were that sensitive and that cute. Like, I know there's this whole thing about being a furry, blah, 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 but I just think it'd be, I think it'd be just nice and cute and adorable and I like I like I want to be cute that's the only thing I've ever really wanted in life and I know that I haven't got it and I probably will never get it but I want I want but not only that but she's squeezed between two beautiful women one is kind of like a, a, a pseudo yandere kind of a pseudo yandere and then the other one is 
I, I don't know if she's just Dere. She's just cute as fuck. <laughs> and she's strong. And she's amazing. It's just, I, the difference between me and Makoto is Makoto was like pounced on fucking like. I mean, I don't think I could do that, but then again, I mean, I might be able to. I don't know. I'm definitely more of a sub than a dom. Anyway. I'm not entirely happy about this arrangement, you know. It breaks my heart to share my cute Makoto with graceless, fleshy sack of human flesh like you. You have no right to touch her as you are. Stay back. What a pain. Juni leaves a heavy sigh. The three of us are sitting together in a hot spring. These hot springs in Yamatai are pretty nice ones. In fact, they're open 24-7, but after I ran away from home, I had no desire to return. These hot springs were located near Warren Village. They're supposed to be used by humans, and I don't think Ohana is super stoked about this. My ex-tutor clutches my, me jealously, her arm looped around mine, her bare chest pushed against my arm, and her silky hair tickled my skin. Clouds of steam drift through the air. Beads of sweat shimmer on my skin, mixed with that of water. It's hot. In fact, it might be a little too hot, especially when I'm sandwiched between the bodies of two women who love me way too much. Mohana's love is scalding, and the narrow eyes Junie's shooting her isn't helping me cool down either. I don't understand, Makoto. How can you put up with this woman? She said she was going to try and change her ways, but I don't think she's learned a thing. She's just as selfish as we, she, uh, when we last saw her. Why, you... Ohana grinds her, her teeth together. If I was really... was an irredeemably selfish as you think I am, I would never sit here and let you run your fingers over my beloved Makoto. It's precisely because I'm trying to atone for my past crimes that I'm letting this madness unfold. It kills me inside and it makes me feel sick, but I'm doing it my best to hold back. You should count yourself lucky. You mean to so much to my cute Makoto or I'd boil you alive. And you should count yourself lucky that you were Makoto's tutor or I'd grasp my sword and slice you in twain. Oh, brother. I, I sigh. A stream as from the hot springs is making me feel dizzy. The sensation of Ohana's breast against my arm make, sure isn't helping matters. I just wanted Ohana and Juni to get along. They're the most important people in my life and I didn't want to turn my back on either of them. I thought if I spent more time, uh, more time together, they could learn to become better friends. Maybe I was naive. Oh my God! Ohana, Makoto is mine. No, she's mine, mine, mine. Hey, you guys! I shift in the hot springs, pulled left and right by Ohana and Juni. Their arms loop with mine. Their exposed busts are rubbing against my slick wet stint. skin. Ripples spread across the surface of the water. It's cool, starry night, but the gentle breeze does little to ally uh, my worries. I feel more anxious than ever before. If you guys keep pulling like that, you'll wrench my arms clean out of their sockets. But Ohana and Juni aren't listening to me. They're too busy uh, trying to one-up each other that they're paying little old me any attention at all. I will claim Makoto's cute darling body all for myself. No, you won't. Makoto's body belongs to her, not you. She isn't a doll. Oh, then why are you gripping her so jealously, you snake of a woman? I'm holding her because if I don't, you'll try to steal her away again. I don't think I've gotten all the vile things you've do done to Makoto. I can't forgive you for that, even if she can. My sense of judgment is too great. Justice. And who cares about a human's idea of justice? You're all, your kind is all the same. Says the homicidal nymph. Homicidal? How rude. I never actually killed anybody. Wow, what a stunning achievement to add to your name. Never actually killed anybody. What a paragon of virtue you are. <laughs> She's got a point. I'm just saying, Junie's got a point. Why you? You? Why? I flop back and forth like a ragdoll. My tail shifts into the water, ears twitching. My, being fawned over by two possessive, je jealous women is more trouble than I thought. What's a cute fox girl to do? It feels like my life just got way more complicated. Is that it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I am gonna. So we only had three choices throughout the entire game. So I am going to check out um, at least this other ending. I think about it for a long time, but in the end, I just can't bring myself to forgive her. Ohana manipulated me for most of my life. She erased my memories uh, of my first ever friend. She lied to me and she tried to hurt Junie. She tried to kill her. No matter how pitiful Ohana looks. 
And no matter how many tears she sheds, I can't forgive her. My heart isn't that big. I'm sorry, Ohana. I'm sure you, th you think you did the right thing, but I can't accept that. You dominated my life for far too long. I'm not a child any longer. No matter what you think, and I'm gonna make you, uh, I'm gonna make my own decisions from now on. I want to stay with Junie and Warren Village. Now, I no longer want to see you again, not ever. Right. I see how it is. I can understand the way you feel, Makoto. I, I, the way I acted was really an excuse for. I won't try to force you to come back with me. I can see that I've already lost all your respect. Begging for your favor would only d demean me. I won't let myself fall that far. I love you, but I had no right to do what I did. It was my job to train you, not to hide you away in Yamathai, cosseted from the real world. I failed in my duty as a tutor, and as such, I have no right to tell you what to do. Your mother will surely scold me when she learns of what happened. I'll be banished from Yamatai myself in disgrace, but no matter what she does, that won't hurt me. Nothing, hurt me, uh, nothing hurts me more than that I failed you. Ohana, I bit my lower lip. I feel my resolve sway him just a bit, but I know I can't afford to show her mercy. She didn't know show Junie any mercy when she had the chance. No matter how remorseful she may be, I don't think she truly regrets trying to hurt Junie. She only regrets that she was unable to overpower me. She's a selfish, cruel woman, so why can't I hate her? I really am the world's biggest dummy. Ohana proves to be good for her word. She leaves Warren Village without a backwards glance. But before she does, she uses her magic to right the wrong she wrought. She fixes the fissures in the ground with her, uh, in, for which her vines sprung, and she repairs the wooden stalls so that were damaged during her attack. Now the festival looks like, like it did the fateful day I arrived here. So I guess that's the end of that. Ohana is gone now. That might be the last time I ever see her. Mishkoto. Juni, who's recovered somewhat after being caught in Ohana's vise, approaches me. She rests one hand on my shoulder, then looks at me in with concerned eyes. Are you alright? I'm fine. I turn and smile at Juni. My fingers find hers and clasp her hand, holding her close. It stings a little, of course, but I think it's necessary. Ohana has controlled my life for far too long. She made all my decisions for me, and I'm not a little girl anymore. I don't need to rely on her. My true powers have finally awakened, and I have all my memories, too. I know that I love you, and I want to stay with you. So you turn your back on your clan, your people, for my sake? I would. It was an easy decision to make. I mean, I smile, uh, a touch abashed. I never had any re real friends in Yamatai. When I was younger, my fellow fox girls were envious of my powers. And when I got older and I lost them, they mocked me for my weakness. I was hopelessly lonely, and I'd always longed for a friend, not a tutor like Ohana, but an equal. And now I've found you. It would be silly to let you go. You say that, but would your mother really allow that? You're the daughter of the clan leader, right? Aren't you supposed to rule your clan in her place? That's the general idea. But I think my mom's already lost all hope in me. She hardly ever spoke to me, even when I was in Yamatai. I doubt she'd be prepared to wage war on humans in war and village to get me back. She'll probably appoint another fox girl as the leader in my place. Maybe she's a girl or Shiori. I bet they'd love that. She's good was forever boasting that she'd make a better leader than I would. She was probably right, too. Shizuka might have a nasty per personality. She's such a rotten gossip. But she's undoubtedly strong. She's decisive, too. I know my mom favors her Shizuka over me. If I vanish, she wouldn't care. It's sad, but Ohana really was the only person in Yamatai that had faith in me. I don't think anybody would miss me. They probably would be relieved more than anything. In the end, I think it's what's for the best. But Mikoto, this is a really big decision. Are you sure about this? I've never been more certain about anything in my life. Yamatai must, uh, might have been my home, but I never felt welcome there. And when I'm with you, however, I feel safe and accepted. You make me happy, Juni, so I rest my palm on Juni's cheek, tracing the soft cont contours on her so sweet face. Would you let me make my new home with you? Mikoto. Oh, oh, Mikoto. There's nothing that would make me happier. And with that declaration, Judy winds her arms around me, her lips meet my own, soft and sweet, and her tongue slides into my... I grasp into the kiss, gasp into the kiss. My heart flutters inside my shelves like a casted butterfly. Despite my grandiose words, I did feel a little sad about saying farewell to Ohana, but this is this kiss with Judy reconfirms all my feelings. I want to stay with her. This is where I really belong. I love her, and I'm willing to weather any hardships if I stay by her side. I'll do whatever it takes. I... Oh, please, get a room, you two. What? 
I jump away from Junie, my face burning. Slowly, I turn my head and see Fallon standing there, a little scuffed from worse for wear, but not particularly injured. She sighs and she examines me and Junie, her arms folded. This is really is this really the time and place for such sappy exchanges like this, Junie? The village chief is still out of commission. We need to help him and all the other villagers too. I don't think anybody's too hurt, but they all need they need rest all the same. Uh, oh yes, you're right. I was so caught up in the moment I forgot. You forgot? Fallon raises her eyebrows. So much for being a knight. Oh shut up! Junie pa Junie pouts uh cutely. Uh and Y'all, Junie pouts cutely and thrusts Fallon in the side of her head. I tried to face off against a nymph in case you didn't notice. I was ready to strike her down for your sake. I already did my part, so excuse me for having a prime moment with my girlfriend. G g girlfriend I stare at Junie wide-eyed. Am I really your girlfriend? Well, you're a girl, and you are my friend. Plus, Junie's eyes glitter mischievously. We already had sex. <laughs> I'd say that makes you my girlfriend, even if the whole sacrificing ourselves for one another thing doesn't. J Junie, uh, oh Junie, oh my cute Makoto, I throw myself into Junie's arms and she catches me, one of her arms winds around my waist and the other rubs at the base of my ears. <laughs> my body quivers, all of a sudden I'm hit with a wave of exhaustion and I melt into Junie's arms, her touch feels so good, I don't know if I could ever leave her. If is there anything more blissful than being petted by Junie's expert hands? I think not. I mean, that's fair. Dude, if, if you have someone that can give a good pet, like, I'm just saying. That's, that's, that's a keeper right there. It's a keeper right there. Fallon size. Nothing more than a faceless background character to my sweet love story. You two are impossible. I know your emotions are running high, but could you take this a little more, more seriously? Plus, I don't want to hear anything about you having sex. Her nose wrinkles. There are some things you should keep to yourself. Well, tough luck. Joking. Mm. <laughs> Baka. We fucked. <laughs> I love Makoto, and I don't care who hears about it. I'll sing it from the rooftops if I have to. There's no one more adorable than her, and she looks even better when she's naked, too. Yeah! Oh, Judy! <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, if you, you're lying to yourself if you don't know a couple like this, or at least have seen a couple like this in real life, you totally know it. Fallon turns her head away. I think she's looking unconcerned, but I can see a telltale blush capturing her cheeks. Talk about too much information. Don't you have any kind of filter? Not when it comes to you. We've been friends for years and years, after all. You're the only person I can boast about my cute girlfriend, and I intend to boast as much as I want. How shameless. A heavy sigh. I appreciate I appreciate that you two are happy, but aren't you worried about what the villagers might say? I don't know if Unwin will approve of Mikoto staying here. He hates fox girls, remember? He thought you were dead, but now everyone knows Ma Mikoto is still alive. You won't be able to keep that secret any longer, Juni. Oh, that's right. I didn't think... Judy glances around fitfully, her lips pursed. I didn't think Unwin will disapprove of our relationship, do you? Well, I wonder. Certain things certainly don't look good. Fallon looks fretful about the whole thing, but I don't—I can't say I really care. Call me care, call me careless, but I know I love Junie, and I want to stay with her. I'm prepared to withstand any hardship if we get to remain together. I realize our union may be fraught, but I think it's worth it. I stay in Warren Village, and I've already made up my mind. Are you alright, Chief? Hey, can you stand? Here, let us help you. I don't believe it. Unwin um, gets to his feet, helped by numerous villagers. He looks shaken as well as he might. His clothes are torn and he's unsteady on his feet, but like Fallon, he doesn't look hurt. He glances at the festival stalls illuminated by bright lights and as though he's searching for something. His eyes finally meet mine, he frowns. I'm sure he's going to hurl some series of ex expletives at me, but to my surprise, this girl, I thought she was a wicked demon, but in the end, she saved us. She saved all of us. Unwin speaks in tremulous, disbelieving tone. His eyes are wide. With the air of one forced to accept something that they hither hitherto thought was impossible, 
He thought I was a monster. He commanded his villagers to attack me. He wanted me dead, but now... She used her magical powers to drive that nymph away. It's because of her that we're still safe. You saw that, didn't you? It wasn't my imagination, was it? No, Chief. I also saw her fighting the nymph. She said she was going to protect us. It sounds like something from a dream, but that fox girl really is on our side. Maybe we judged her prematurely. What if she isn't a monster after all? I don't think that she came to this village to help us, do you? Maybe she's a symbol of good luck, not bad. More and more villagers are looking at me, their eyes wide with newfound respect. I can't feel any animosity in their gazes. Instead, I feel acceptance. Nobody points their weapons towards me, and no one raises their voices. Finally, they're looking at me as an equal. There, you see? Duty looks at Unwin, hands planted at her hips, proud smile on her face despite her evident fatigue. I told you Mikoto meant us no harm, and I was right. She helped us all, despite the cruel prejudices you subjected her to. She had no reason to fight for us, but she did all the same. It doesn't matter that she's a fox girl. She's good and kind, and she has just as much to live here as we do. Yes, I, I see that now. I hate to admit I was wrong, but in my old age, I suppose even I can make mistakes. I was unpardonably cruel towards this young woman, and she defended us all the same. She has a bigger heart than I ever imagined, and that's why I'm prepared to recant all I said prior. Unwin kneels before me in an unexpected gesture of su supplication, his hands folded together at his front. Miko, Mikoto, I now see that you are not a monster. You are a good, kind woman, and as a token of my gratitude, I will let you stay in my vi village among my people. It's the least I can offer after all you've done. I just hope you can forgive me. That's how I ended up living in Warren Village. Unwin's clear conclutory speech it was so sudden and unexpected I could hardly believe it but now a week has passed and I've been allowed to live in Warren Village among these humans who once hated me without any incident every night I sleep in the fe same bed as Junie and every day the two of us go about our lives in peace and harmony no one scowls at me no one scorns me instead I'm treated with warmth and respect the likes of which I never knew before Shizuka and Chiori were never this kind of me I've not even been treated so well it doesn't feel real but it is. My life had taken a sudden drastic change, and I'm happy with it. I'm happy, so long as I get to stay with Junie. The two of us waste no time reconfirming our love, either. We hug and kiss, and even more, every almost every night. And this night was no exception. Ah, see, bathing suits. Bathing suits. Bathing suits. Just like how everybody has sex in the pool. Bathing suits. <clears throat> Makoto, oh Makoto, Judy. The two of us stand together in a in gently flowing river, with which runs all the way up to our thighs. My hair trails in the water, and droplets of moisture cling to my skin. I'm so jealous, man. My hair is not that long. I just, I wish, yeah, it goes down like right here. It's not long enough, man. I, I wanted to, to continue to grow. The water is cool and it makes me shiver, but Junie's body pressed against mine is soft, warm, and inviting. Now that we're finally together, I don't want to let her go. Not now, not ever. Oh, Junie. Makoto. Amigoto. Junie gra gasps into my kiss. Her long, ashen eyelashes fall shut and she parts her lips. My tongue sticks, sneaks into her mouth, tasting her saliva. My fingers trail down her back, following the curve of her spine. It's the darkest night, and the stars twinkle in the sky. The cool breeze rocks the trees that surround us, and the verdant grass that frames the riverbank. I can hear cicadas and crickets chirping in the undergrowth, overheard an owl hoots. The sound gently flowing water mingles with the whisper of the wind, beating on my heart. As a fox girl, I have sensitive ears. I can detect things most many humans can't, and all the sights, sounds, and smells of nature are overwhelming. Water glistens on my bare thighs and, my, and between my bosom. My toes curl against the silt riverbed, savoring the soft sensation of the earth. I don't think I've ever felt more at home in my life, or more happy. Hey, Mikoto. Junie draws away from the kiss. Her lips are swollen and continued uh, from my continued caress, and her face is flushed. Didn't we come here so we can bathe? This doesn't feel much like bathing to me. But we are bathing, in a sense, Junie. You're bathing in my love. Your love, is it? There's a small pause filled with the gentle hum of insects. Judy looks me up and down and a uh, dubious look on her face before <laughs> she begins to giggle. Judy is almost naked, save for her underwear. Her bra and panties are soaked and they cling to her skin, clearly displaying the curves of her body. 
When she laughs, her shoulders tremble, and so do her breasts. I can see her. Is she cold, or is she kiss, <laughs> or kissing me turn her on? I wonder. Jeez. I pout at Junie and poke at, in the side, which makes her gill go all the harder. She tries to back away. The droplets of water splash everywhere, ripples spending through the surface of water. Why are you laughing at me, you meanie? I was trying to be romantic. I know, I know, but... <laughs> Junie giggles and wipes a tear from her eye. It just sounded so corny. I'm your girlfriend. I'm allowed to be corny. I suppose you're... That's right. Junie smiles and holds me in her arms once more. Fingers resting on my hip, she brings her face close to mine. Our nose is bubbling. Her ashen hair dripping moisture onto my bare shoulders. I, appreci I appreciate it. I appreciate you, Mikoto. I'm so happy we could stay together like this. Junie. Junie dips her head and kisses me once more. I sigh, sigh into the kiss. My toes twitching. My breasts push against Junie's. Our bodies meet without an inch of space between us, damp and slick. I really do love her, and I don't want to leave her side. I was just wondering, though. Junie breaks apart from the kiss once more. I'm both furrowed, and she looks concerned about something. You're a fox girl, right? You hadn't noticed? I, I twitch my tail, and Junie smiles. It's rather obvious, yes, I know you are, but if you're a fox girl, does that mean you'll outlive me? I don't know the particulars, but I've heard fox girls can live for centuries and centuries. We humans don't have that luxury, though. Soon I'll get old, and then we won't be able to spend time like this together. That's right. Oh, man, getting deep, okay. Uh, I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ready for the deep conversation about... Um, this kind of thing, but it's it's something that does come up. I glance away from Junie, directing my gaze into the undergrowth. The rushes and in line the riverbank rustle and the intense flip hidden here and there, humming in the air. I'm a fox girl, and I'll probably live for 300, maybe 400 years. That's the way it's supposed to be, at least, but I look back at Junie, I hold her waist, pressing our bodies together in a soft embrace. I'm prepared to sacrifice that if I could be with you. You mean you can just give up all those years? I don't know the precise details, but I've heard that there are rituals fox girls can do, ways to draw out our magic out of our bodies. It's because of our magical abilities that we can live for so long. If we forfeit our magic, we become just like humans. We start aging like humans do, and we die like humans do, too. I don't know how to do it, but I think it's possible. Mikoto. Junie's eyes stare at me, eyes wide. You would really do that for me? I would. But that's not fair. I'd be asking you to commit suicide. You'd have a long life ahead of you. I don't want to get in the way. Silly, Junie. I press a kiss against Junie's already kiss-swollen lips, and she sighs. I turn my back on my clan for you. I give up all the worthless years, and is nothing in comparison to that. It might cut my life short, but what's the alternative? Stand by your side and watch you get old without me? Watching you die? I narrow my eyes. I don't want that. That'd be way too lonely. I don't want to be without you, so if that means we can stay together like any happy human couple would, I'm prepared to do it. The cool wind blows through the trees. It catches my hair and chills the droplets of water shining on my skin. I shiver. Anyways, this conversation kind of got heavy, didn't it? You're right. We only came here to bathe. I guess we should hurry before one, one of us catches a cold. I let my hands fall from Junie. I turn, ready to finish with my aborted bathing session when... Miko, don't wait. Junie's arms sneak around my waist. She spins me around, water splashing around my legs until we're face to face. Her pale blue eyes bore into mine. Her cheeks are pink, and her chest rises and falls. The white fabric of her bra translucent against her pale skin. Junie looks pretty. Looks very pretty. She's so pretty, it takes my breath away. I just wanted you to know. I really do love you, you know. Being with you made my life a whole lot better, and I don't want to be without you either. I'm glad I was able to find you again, and now I want to stay with you. I don't want to be selfish, and I don't want to sacrifice uh, your happiness for my sake, but hearing you say all these things makes me feel relieved like nothing else. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. I don't think that you have a bad bone in your body, Junie. I smile at her, my eyes soft and gentle. Junie is pressing against me. She's quivering, the soft body chilled by the water. She looks small and all of a sudden I'm fragile. Maybe that's why I want to protect her. I know our relationship will be fraught with difficulties, but I feel the same, you know. I want to stay with you too, and I'll do anything to make my dream come true. I really am. Uh, you really are the person I love more than every anybody else. <sighs> it's so cute. 
with this whispered declaration spoken beneath the shivering night sky, I pull Juni into another kiss. This kiss is longer than the last and the most passionate of all. I hold Juni's body as close to that hand. My thigh slips between her legs and my teeth nibble at her lower lip. And then, yeah. My, my fingers chug. There'll, there'll be enough time to worry about the uh, practicalities of our relationship later. Not right, right now, I want to make Juni happy. Uh, Juni happy. I devote the rest of my life to making her smile. I really do love her. There you go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this series. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys wanted to see the other two options that we missed, or check out the game for yourself in HD quality. And if I did... I don't know if I did because I, I have to edit all of these videos, but if I did block anything out, you can see the unedited version in here as well. So thank you guys so much for all the uh, all the support on the series. Um, I know you guys, I know visual novels aren't exactly the most popular thing on YouTube, but I, I for one, enjoyed the Sakura series. If you guys want to see more of this, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys want to see on the channel if you guys are, have any visual novel suggestions you know whatever it might be just leave the comment in the comment section and let me know your thoughts as well as hitting that like button and subscribing for future content because we will have a lot of stuff coming up on the channel especially here this month so um make sure you guys stay around for that and we'll see y'all